Hi, I've got a question for you. Z cubed equals one. What's the solution? Find the roots. Solve the equation. Z cubed equals one. Go. Finished? No, you haven't. You haven't spent long enough time on it. Okay. Solution to that is not just one. You might be thinking, yeah, the answer is Z equals one. Yeah. That's a cubic equation. Okay. There are three roots to that. Okay. You ever seen Inglorious Bastards? Okay. That was a great moment in the film. Okay. You should have done that. If you've seen it, you know the scene I'm talking about, but that's fantastic. I really like the film. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah. Three solutions. Okay. Why is there three solutions? Well, right. if I have a really simple expression, it's not really an equation, is it? Z equals one. One answer. Z equals one. Okay. All right. Quadratic. Z squared equals one. Two possible answers, aren't there? Z equals positive, negative, one. Okay, let's try a quartic. Let's skip the cubic, go for a quartic. Z to the power of 4 equals 1. Okay, so Z equals what? Plus minus 1? Yeah, what are the other two answers? Plus minus i. Yeah, if you do i to the power of 4, you get 1. Negative i to the power of 4, also 1. Okay, what I'm trying to show you is a simple demonstration that because this is a cubic, there are with three solutions. Three answers. Okay. Remember what I said a few videos ago? Whenever there's one solution that's complex, the conjugate will also be a solution. There's a complex solution to that, and they come in pairs, conjugate pairs. We've just got to find out what it is. Okay. And it's not that easy unless you've seen probably all the videos that have come before this one. Okay. So let's let's have a look at doing it. Okay, where does this lie on the argon plane? Okay, argon diagram. Okay, one. It's there, isn't it? One. How do you write that in modulus argon form? Okay. How do you write in modulus argon form? Well, R of course is just one because that's the, the modulus of it, and the argon is just um, theta, isn't it? Okay. Or you could say the argon is equal to two pi. Okay, because you know it is. All right. So you can actually write this number one as one times cos zero plus i sine zero. Yeah, you with me? So what I'm saying is you can write z cubed as that. Okay. But so there's another possibility, isn't there? Okay. You could also write it as cos two pi plus i sine. 2 pi. Are there other possibilities? Of course there are. Of course there are. In fact, you can write it like this. Cos 2k pi plus i sine 2k pi, where k is what kind of number? Yeah, integer. Because you just keep on going around, can't you? 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, 10 pi, k times. Okay, we don't use n for another reason. You've seen that. Okay. All right. So what am I going to do? Okay, let's just rub out this. Okay. So that means is that the number one is the same as that, exactly the same as that. So that means z cubed is exactly the same as that. Cos two k pi plus i sine. 2k pi. I'm going to rub this out, but I need to put in there that k is an integer still. Otherwise, it's not really mathematically complete. Right? Hmm. So, what comes next? What comes next? We need to solve what z is. So, what are you going to do? You cube root both sides, don't you? Yeah, z equals cos. 2k pi plus i sine 2k pi to the power of a third. Do you know what's coming next? Previous video? De Moivre's theorem. That's why I've not used n. De Moivre's theorem is z to the n. It's all okay. De Moivre's theorem. Okay. So 1 to the power of a third, of course, is 1. So that's fine. Okay. What do we do with this? Okay. We write it as cos um, 2k pi over 3 
plus i sine 2k pi over 3. That's what z is. Okay. Where k is equal to any integer. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to try some numbers. Okay. We're going to put in k equals 0. And what happens? We get z is equal to cos 0 plus i sine 0. Well, cos 0 is 1. Sine 0 is just 0. So that's just going to be 1. We'll try another number, k is equal to 1, okay? This time, we're going to get cos, let's write it down, cos 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3. I really hope I left my calculator down here. Naughty word coming up. <clears throat> no, I didn't leave my calculator down there. Um, uh, I'll look it up. Cos 2 pi over 3, um, negative half. Sorry, you're probably less impressed now, because I didn't know that. I can't I know everything. Yeah. My head can't know everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I sine 2 pi over 3, that's root 3 over 2. Okay. So there's your other solution. I'm just going to call them z1 is equal to 1, z2 is equal to that. Okay. You should know now what z3 is, but we'll calculate it now. I just want to show you that you can get all the results by substituting k equals 0, 1 and 2. Okay. So Z3 is when we put K equals 2 into that, which is going to be cos and 2 and pi times 2, that's 4 pi over 3. Never mind, something just dropped, but it's not important. So and 4 pi over 3. Okay. You work out cos 4 pi over 3 is. Okay. You heard me? It's negative a half. Work out sine four, 4 pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2. I don't even need to check the book to know that's going to be right. Oh, look at that, that's right. I don't need to check. Because of what I said about complex conjugates, okay? So this is the real solution, and these two are the complex solutions, okay? And notice that the complex solutions. They are conjugate pairs, negative half plus root 3 over 2, i, negative half, subtract root 3 over 2, i. Always, always good happens. Be mathematically proved, okay, that whenever you've got a complex number, um, they come in conjugate pairs, okay. So there's your solutions, okay. You can check this if you want. How do you check it? Well, obviously you do 1 cubed, which is 1, so, yep, satisfy that. You work out what that cubed is. Yeah, you can do that, multiply by itself three times. You will get that. Check it if you want. Same with that. When you multiply that by itself three times, that cube, you will get that. Again, check it if you want. Okay, check that if you want. Now, that's all very nice. Okay. What I want to do is I just want to... Um, oh, before I wave it off, if you want, you could do an Euler form if you want. Yeah. Um, maybe just do it yourself, see how that goes. Okay. You write it as um, z equals um, e to the 2k pi i. Yeah. Um, and so on. So some people prefer Euler form, some people prefer this form, it's up to you. Um, I kind of like this form because I like things being in Cartesian to be honest, because it helps me place it where it is on the Yarkin diagram a bit better. All right. So anyway, um, I'm going to rub this off because I don't really need that anymore. Okay, um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll just try and keep the solutions there. Okay, so I've got the solutions. But what I want to do is I want to plot them on a an argon diagram. Oh, incidentally, um, maybe I should just mention this. If you try and work out um, k equals 3 is, k equals 4, k equals 5, these solutions will be repeated again. Try it if you want. Substitute k equals 3 and you get these solutions repeated again. k equals 4, k equals 5. If you went backwards, you can do that. k equals negative 1, k equals negative 2, negative negative 3, you get these solutions repeated. So even though k stands for any um, integer value, you only need to substitute in three consecutive values of k in order to get your three different answers. Otherwise, they're just going to be repeated again. Okay. The next diagram is lovely. Okay. It's an argon diagram. There we go. 
like that, imaginary and real. Okay? So Z1 equals 1. It goes there, doesn't it? Yeah? What about the next one? Okay? Negative half plus root 3 over 2i. Okay? Well, the diagram, the, um, so the arguments help me with that. 2 pi over 3, that's somewhere over there. And then negative 2 pi over 3 for this one, um, somewhere there. Okay? Yeah, 4 pi over 3, if you want. Okay? Um, what I can show you is that these solutions lie on a unit circle which has not been drawn well at all okay maybe if i just do the thing again because if i draw the circle first and then i draw the axes there's a hint for it a tip draw a circle first and then just put the axes through it generally works up very easy see see how nice that is and then i can just do that okay that and then the first solution is there next solution will be there next solution will be there okay if I just join them up using vectors like that, okay, what can you tell? Well, what you can tell is that this angle here, which is 2 pi over 3, is the same as this angle there, which is 2 pi over 3, which is the same as this angle there, which is 2 pi over 3. And they're all up to 2, 4, 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi, okay? Um, which is rather neat, isn't it? Okay, it's rather neat, okay? Now, this is maybe something you could do, okay, because I'm not going to do it. What would your solution look like if you wanted to solve z to the power of, I don't know, let's do z to the power of 4 to make, the, to make it obvious, okay? z to the power of 4 is equal to 1. Well, you'd have that same circle, of course, and I mentioned the solutions a little while ago, didn't I? I said the solutions are 1, negative 1, i, negative i, okay? Can you see? They're also going to be divided up neatly, so 1, negative 1, i, negative i, there, okay? Or divided by an angle of pi over 2. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. The next one I'm going to ask you to think about is this z to the power of 5 equals 1. How many solutions are you going to get? You've just got the time I've got to take to draw this diagram to think about it. z to the power of 5 equals 1. Well, they're all going to lie in a unit circle. The reason it's a unit circle is because it's 1. If it was 2, 3, 4, it would be different radius. Okay, radius 2, 3, 4, and so on. That's not a great circle, but I'm not going to draw it again. Okay. Um, and what will these solutions look like? Well, you'd have, obviously, one there, okay? But then you'd have the other solutions, such as, let's just try and get this right. Um, so it's about, yeah, there, there, and ooh. Um, try there and there, okay? It's not, it's not really well accurate, okay? But you go that angle there is the same as that angle there, same as that angle there, same as that angle there, same as that angle there. Okay, um, what's that going to be? Well, two pi over five, isn't it? Seventy-two degrees. Okay, that's what I was thinking in my head because it helped me with the actual thing. All of those are two pi over five, two pi over five, two pi over five. Okay, so in terms of your De Morf's theorem and so on, you're going to have your answers as you know, cos 2 pi over 5, 4 pi over 5, 6 pi over 5, and so on, okay? If we had z to the power of 7, or z to the power of 6, z to the power of n, that's a really great one, isn't it? z to the power of n, okay? Let's just do that, okay? Just show you what that looks like. So if we had z to the power of n is equal to 1, so let's try and draw a better circle this time. Absolutely lovely. There we go. The first solution is going to be there, of course, one, but then what you're going to have is you're going to have all these angles equally spaced, you know, like that, going all the way around. Let's just try and complete this, okay? Yeah, all your solutions are going to lie on that unit circle, and all these angles are going to be equally spaced. What is each of these angles going to be? Yeah, you guessed it right, it's 2 pi over n, okay? n complex roots all divided up into n different sectors of circles, which is really lovely, okay? It's a nice demonstration that when you find the nth root, you'll get n different solutions, okay? Which is rather nice. Right. See you later.